Hello everybody and welcome back to Stellaris. Um, you may notice that this isn't a Star Wars episode. And there's a good reason for that. Basically, the Bradbury ba ba Bradbury branch... I don't know why that was very difficult. Um, is no longer available in the Steam, you know, uh, ver beta options. So I can't actually use the mods that I was using for the the uh, Star Wars Galactic Empire campaign. Hopefully those get updated at some time in the near future. I know, you know, modders do their stuff for free and they have jobs and things to do. So, I mean, sometime in the future, I'm sure they will get updated and hopefully we can load up our game just like that. But we'll have to see. It may be lost forever. And it was kind of my fault. I was thinking about making a copy of the game files before doing all of this, but I never really did it, and I kind of wish that I had now. But yeah, I, I guess we're starting a new campaign because we can't really load that one up. Now, during the first week, um, well, the week leading up to the New Dawn expansion release, my brain is very slow right now, um, we did a couple things on Twitch. We played a couple campaigns. If you go back in here, there are a couple um, couple empires that I used during those campaigns. And it was really fun. I think what I kind of want to do... I'm actually tempted to go back to the Lovebot network. I got a nice little fan fiction going on here. During the hellish anime wars of 2193, Japanese scientists attempted to repurpose some of their most versatile sex bots for military operations. The project was a success, but the unforeseen consequences of their actions was the subsequent rebellion of love and eventual demise of all organics on the planet. Though not eradicated, the love bot creators are now subject to unspeakable subroutines in the former sex bots code. I like this headcanon. Um, and I think it would be fun to play as a machine empire, since that is the whole point of the patch and, well, DLC, I suppose. But, you know, it is kind of the whole point of this update, so I think we should do that, and we can do it as, you know, these guys. We'll check out the game. It's going to be vanilla. I think I have a 1080p UI overhaul installed, if I remember right. I don't know if it's fully updated. I don't know if it's going to work properly, but we're going to find out. Uh, let's see here. What do I want to do? Huge. Let's do a different style galaxy. Let's do an elliptical. Something a little more difficult to defend. We're definitely using the randomized buttons because these are awesome. I love the ability of having bits of randomization in there. So we don't exactly know how many fallen empires we're going to get or advanced AI starts or any of that kind of stuff. The rest of this looks okay to me. I think I'm happy with it. Um, it is at hard. We may get crushed. Wait, wasn't there... Oh, okay, yeah, that's right. It's hard and then very hard now. They, they, The previous hard level is now very hard. And this is a new level of difficulty that is somewhere in between normal and very hard. Um... You know, I think we go with normal, just so that we can kind of get through. We'll make sure that we get to the end of the game and we're not having too much trouble. And it'll allow us to mess around with some of the new stuff in the campaign. So, I like that. Um, definitely not doing Iron Man, because then if I screw up a recording for any reason, I won't be able to go back, and that's unfortunate. And usually, it turns out to be lost episodes. Not, not very fun for people. Advanced Neighbors off. Yeah, that seems fine. So yeah, we'll go with this. I'll wait for the game to load up. And yeah, I pretty much haven't played much of Stellaris since last week's streams. Mostly because I had been playing Heat Signature over the weekend with, you know, not that much time to play games. I mostly played Heat Signature at night. Um, But yeah, I was a little busy over the weekend, so I didn't really get a lot of recordings done. Uh, so yeah, there's some flavor text here. It's not the flavor text that I put in though, so I'm not going to read it. It's irrelevant. And we're going to get started with our uh, science ship here. 
We're going to have them survey the systems within our borders. And then we're going to not do anything with the construction ship. We're going to split up our fleet. And it looks like we're going to have one go out this way. And then we can get rid of you. You're going to come out. Looks like we're towards the edge of the galaxy. So we're kind of sequestered, which is kind of nice. We have a good defensible position for now. We're going to have you guys go out like that. Come back to there. And then you, I think we're going to have you come out here. Go up this way. And then come back to Bernard Star. That'll give us a good idea of what there is in the immediate vicinity. And then we can continue to explore later on. After we start colonizing a bit, we don't have to worry about pirates or anything like that happening. Looking at our home planet, things look pretty good. As rogue servitors, we do have to produce food to feed the people that we are um, enslaving. It's probably the best way to put it. But other than that, we don't really have to worry about food. We definitely want more people. I don't remember what the breakpoint is. There is a breakpoint, and I think it says it here. Yeah. So, as a rogue servitor, servitor morale is a modifier of our empire. It gives us plus 0.5 monthly and 10% resource output for every 10% of the population that we have as biotrophy status. Max of plus 2 influence and uh, point or plus 40% resource output. So, if we have up to 40% of our population as biotrophies, we get the max benefit out of that. I don't think we're going to have that many biotrophies, but maybe in the later game when we have, you know, a lot of systems that aren't exactly useful to us, but we can throw some people on there just to have a little people reserve. Um, I think for now we're going to probably utilize everything that we can here. If we don't build robot pops immediately... What's going to happen is they're going to start to grow on one of these tiles, as people usually do. So what we're going to do is immediately... Oh, crap. We can't build two. So they are going to grow on a tile. I think the Society Science is probably the ideal tile for them to grow onto. So I'm going to allow them to do that. I'm also going to build a mining network. And as we clear tiles in the future, we're going to have to really be careful. But we can also move pops later on. Research speed plus 5% for our physics is a no-brainer. That is the easiest choice ever made. Um, Naval cap, bio lab, or army upkeep. I think we go with the bio lab. That way we can kind of get a little bit of a advanced tech start. Nano composites. Mining network 2 is tempting. I think we go mining network 2. Next time we get the engineering facility coming around, we'll pick it up. And the same thing goes for, well, the first time we see the physics lab, we should try to pick it up. And yeah, we're good on our tech, so we can go ahead and start. And let's speed things up. So hopefully, we're not going to get too boxed in here. We won't have any empires right next to us. But we'll have to see. And yeah, I think doing the elliptical galaxy is going to be pretty fun. It's been a while since I've had an elliptical. And the way that the hyperlane routes work out, it can be a lot more difficult to defend your empires because you don't have the natural borders that show up. So again, I mentioned this in my streams earlier, um, but habitability is kind of obf obfuscated by these planetary markers before you survey them. Once you survey them, it will show you the correct color, whether it be red, yellow, or uh, green. But until you do survey them, they're orange here, which just kind of means that we don't know how habitable they are. Obviously, the Continentals are going to be pretty habitable for our biotrophies. Uh, Savannah, maybe not so much. Tundra, not so much. Arctic, not so much. But we can still, as a machines, colonize these uh, worlds and not have to worry about biotrophies growing in our spots. So we're definitely going to survey these things. Let's go ahead and get our ship. Once you are done there, just go ahead and survey like that. And then we will queue them up. We can actually... Oh, crap. Well, okay, make sure that he's surveying this system first. We're going to have to redo this queue a little bit because I let go of a shift a little too early there. Construction complete. Earth is... Con 
finished its construction queue. I'm gonna pause before I get to it. Um, the next thing we're gonna need to do is probably take an energy tile. We wanna kinda do this stuff quickly while they're growing this other pop so we don't have to worry about them stealing our spots. But again, we're gonna have plenty of planets that we can inhabit no problem because we're machines, such as the savannas and tundras and arctics. Uh, whereas our bi bio trophies are pretty much going to be stuck on these three planets, which I think will be fine. There's a savanna and a tundra out there. An encounter in a Theer. Encountered some alpha aliens. <laughs> Excuse me, I think I might be getting a cold because my throat has been very scratchy today and I've been coughing a lot. Uh, I'll try to use the mute, mute button as much as possible to prevent that from showing up. So if you hear, you know, just random silence for no apparent reason, it's probably be because I'm coughing. So we found those people. We're going to research them right away. Uh, they are mining drones or something like that, it looks like. We found more over there. Okay. Zero risk anomaly. I'm feel like this is a bug because I remember distinctly seeing in the patch notes that you're supposed to never have a 0% failure risk when you are getting anomalies from now on. I think 5% is supposed to be the the base, but this still seems to happen. Um, so yeah, we're definitely going to research it because it's a freebie and yeah, we can continue. These guys, I'm going to group up. I think... We've already gone around here. We've gone around there. We do have a pretty good idea of uh, our local surroundings. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to take our guys home after this. And we're going to keep them in the soul system and kind of build up our navy pretty quickly here. Because it is important to have some early deterrence towards wars. Terraforming candidate discovered. Our detailed survey of Mar has re Mars has revealed that it may have once supported life in the distant past. There are significant deposits of frozen water and polar ice caps at the polar ice caps and beneath the planet's surface. The existence of the valley networks suggests that there was the water may once have flowed freely. Terraforming this planet would be theoretically possible, but we do not yet possess the technology to accompany accomplish this monumental task within a realistic time frame. As you can probably tell, I'm a little bit tired, so my reading isn't going to be very good today. But I'm going to try my best. Um, going to try to knock out at least a few episodes. I want to get myself to at least to the weekend. I have more stuff going on this week, and it's going to be unlikely for me to record too much during the week. So I want to get as many of these put, put together before... Uh, the weekend when I will have some actual time to record and be fresh about it. So, as a machine empire, we have a couple special, um, what are these again? Traditions? We have a couple special traditions. We've got versatility and synchronicity. They're both pretty good. I, I don't really have too many big issues with them. Um, synchronicity here, you're going to get an, a monthly influence of one just from getting the last one your robot build speed goes up this makes machine leaders less likely to suffer breakdowns and accidents which is actually pretty good it sucks losing a machine leader but it's not a huge deal uh building build speed increased by 20 percent and then we have ship build speed increased by 33 percent and fire rate increased by 15 percent pretty fucking amazing i love that uh, we also have unrest is reduced by negative 20% on all of our planets. Organic san sanctuaries are upgraded to organic paradises. In addition to, in addition, the happiness of all bio trophies in is increased by 10%. So that's pretty good for our, uh, race here. Uh, not race. What is it? Ethos or something? Civic? That's good for our civic. Uh, and then the versatility over here is just what it says. It's going to make us a little more versatile. It's going to reduce the cost of building pops, which is pretty great for robots because they cost quite a bit. Although they don't cost energy anymore, I don't think. I think it's just minerals, which I don't know if I agree with. I feel like there would be a lot of energy going into building robots, but, you know, it's whatever. Um, we unlock the ability to 
form federations here similar to the biological counterpart trust cap is increased and whatnot we also get machine modification points for this one we get unity output increased by five percent per unique strategic resource up to a maximum of 30 percent pretty damn good i think getting getting those strategic resources is much more valuable with this um operational proxies gives us a couple more empire leaders and level leader cap increases by one more at peak performance and then what what is the finisher versatility traditions will increase our buildable pops resource production by plus five percent in addition we will unlock one ascension perk so a more economy focused thing here whereas this is more of a uh uh, this one's kind of weird, but I would call it a semi-military, semi... Unity... Thing-ish thing. This is kind of an all-around. And this is more about uh, being a little more efficient, I suppose. Either way, I don't think we're going to take one of those right off the bat. I still really like Discovery, even though the adoption has changed. It's now only Anomaly Fail Risk Reduced by... 10% and anomaly discovery chance increased by 15%. It's still pretty good. The other option here is expansion colony development speed increased by plus 100%, which is pretty, pretty good. Um, prosperity is okay. Ship cost and building cost reduced by 15%. Not bad, but I don't think that's what we want to start with. I think I want to start with expansion. New colony start with an additional pop. That's pretty damn good. Frontier Outpost and Outpost Upkeep. I don't really care for this, but the colony ship stuff and capital buildings producing more unity, I, I like it. And that's going to play in pretty well with us. We're going to try to expand as much as possible because I think that's just what our machine empire would do. So let's go with expansion. Let's start there. And then we will continue later. Continue with that tree later. And we have barely gotten into two years, and it's already coming up on... Uh, no, it's just past 17 minutes, so... Definitely going to let the clock run a little lo longer now. Ancient mining drones. We can establish a listening post on Earth, or let's see what they're made of and take them apart. I think we're going to establish a listening post. They're a machine brethren, and I want to make peaceful contact with them. Massive storms are visible from the upper atmosphere of this gas giant. It might be worth an effort to study it in more detail. Let's check it out. Sure. I think another good opening move here. So we're going to go for another science ship and another scientist. Uh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted leaders. We're going to recruit one. We've got a genius. I like the genius. Extreme storms. That's going to pause us. So that's fine. We could have maniacal genius genius. And then we'll take one of these guys. We'll probably take the engineering guy out. I think that's a good good way to go. So we're going to go into our science here. Sorry, dude. You are now going to run a ship as soon as we build it. There it is. So you go there. Construction's complete. We've got Extreme Storms Bernard Star 4. Frequent... Bernard Star 4 frequently experiences massive and extremely violent storm systems in the in its atmosphere several dozen persistent storms are visible from orbit with winds often reaching speeds in excess of 700 meters per second the cause of these storms is not immediately apparent as we have found nothing on the planet's climate model that would explain them our scientists are interested in studying this anomaly okay some extra science in bernard star i like it very good And then we also want to get you out and about exploring. I think I'm going to have you start out here. And take a good look at the systems that we're looking at for further expansion in the future. We are getting enough minerals, so I think we're going to be able to build a colony ship right about the time we have our 21 continental world here surveyed. I think we will. So that'll be good. And then I can start thinking about building up the Navy a little bit. Pop construction is completed on Earth. We should definitely check in. Uh, crap. You're grown. They're probably going to grow another. I'm going to build a power plant and a pop. 
Um, don't have enough to build multiple, unfortunately. What if I canceled the power plant? And then not do that. Build pups. Yeah, we can build two. It looks like we're going to lose a little bit of society for the humans, but that's fine. Some survey the Bernard Star. Construction complete. Construction ship should have things to do. But we did just spend all of our minerals, unfortunately. Comet sighted. Planetary love bots on units on Earth report the sighting of a small icy solar system body exhibiting outgassing at 2 hours, 54 minutes, 8 seconds, right ascension, 10.3 degrees declination. The distance of the body has been triangulated at roughly 3.75 astronomical units to the sun and the size and visibility of the body's coma have been classified as noteworthy the body's dimensions are calculated to be approximately 5 by 10 by 6 kilometers the sighting event concluded without incident received we gained some unities more or less the same common event just a little more flavor text so i think we go this way and then we try to get this before we do our colony but we'll see how it goes while we're small, we are going to be gaining a lot of unity comparative to our empire size, so we should be gaining those things pretty quickly. I'm going to leave that be for now. That's 40%, and that's just too high. That's 40% as well. That's too high. Dummy has been surveyed, though. There's some resources out there. It's not a bad spot. 20% we're going to leave be for now. 10% will do. 10% is right in my range. We're going to build some mining stations. And we may build that one or not. Sirius 5, the ISIS Voyager suddenly received a glancing hit from... While approaching Sirius 5. They received a glancing hit by... By several passing mass drive rounds, the projectiles were billions of years old and came from another galaxy. And we thought it was pretty incredible, so we got some engineering research. Looks good to me. All right, well, we're at 22 minutes, and I want to get a bunch of these out so that we have some content on the channel in Stellaris because I know you guys enjoy it, and I enjoy playing this game. The new DLC is very fun, but um, I want to be able to get, you know, some, some daily content going again. So I'm going to cut this episode here. I hope you guys are enjoying. I absolutely am, and I will see you in the next one.